What is going on everybody? For those who don't know, I go by BOSG and this is another Eagles offseason video. If you guys are new to this channel and love talking Philly sports nearly every single day, go down below and hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, and make sure to turn on the notification bell so you guys are instantly notified whenever I upload a new video. Now what we're going to talk about today is what moves do the Philadelphia Eagles still need to make over this offseason before training camp starts. So, in my eyes, there's at least three or four things that the Eagles can do with what they still have left right now in cap space and what they can do with it if, if they want to sign some players, if they want to save it all for next year. So, anyway, let's just, let's just get right into this. My number one thing that the Eagles need to do, and by the way, this is going to be going in order. My number one thing that the Eagles must do before training camp starts over the rest of the offseason is to trade Zach Ertz. Yes, this is Dallas, this is Dallas Goddard season. This is Goddard season. Let the young guy in Dallas Goddard do his thing, and Zach Ertz has not been great for us since we won the Super Bowl back in 2018 between the Eagles and the Patriots. He hasn't really been at his best level, and I just have a feeling that Zach Ertz's career is likely to be done in Philadelphia if Howie Rosen ever decides to move on from Zach Ertz and to rely on Dallas Goddard to be your starting tight end and have Richard Rodgers and Jack Stoll be the backup tight ends. So, my number one thing is to trade Zach Ertz. My number two thing, and this is after we trade Zach Ertz, because... With the, with the cap space that you have, so the Eagles currently have $4.5 million in cap space right now. And Zach Ertz, if you trade Zach Ertz to a team like the Bills, the Jags, the Jets, the and some of these other types of teams, if you trade him to one of those squads, like one of those teams with the Bengals as well, you get eight and a half million dollars added to your to, to the total amount of cap space. So, as a matter of fact, four and a half million dollars plus eight and a half million dollars is thirteen million dollars combined, and that is what you have to work with. My number two thing that the Eagles must do is to sign Landon Dickerson. Yes, the Philadelphia Eagles have signed every rookie that they have drafted except for Landon Dickerson. And Howie Roseman just keeps on hesitating and just does not get Zach Ertz out of here. But not only Zach Ertz has to go, but maybe some of these other veterans. Because in my eyes, $13 million is not going to do it to sign Lane Dickerson. And in my opinion, I just don't see the Philadelphia Eagles paying Lane Dickerson $13 million on a cheap two or three year deal but this will go along with the third thing and you can flip flop the second and the third one which i am about to say right now the third thing that i think the eagles still need to do over the offseason is to get a cb2 yes the philadelphia eagles have not yet gotten the cb2 and we don't really have a reliable one yet we have avante maddox Zach mcpherson and some of these other guys that are still trying to learn on how to be a potential Eagles starting cornerback, and I just don't see much faith in them. Avante Maddox, he struggled at CB2 last year, and that's what's going to concern me a little bit if we do not get a CB2 in starting Avante Maddox in the secondary on the opposite side of Darius Slay, and I don't think that's going to work, and the question is, can Zach McPherson go off in training camp? If Zach McPherson goes off in training camp, he will likely get a start at CB2, but the thing is, he is a rookie playing on the opposite side of a veteran cornerback in Darius Slay, so can Zach McPherson make it to be CB2? He could, but I would rather have another veteran on this roster, and the veteran I want on this roster is Steve Nelson. Steve Nelson is very good in the secondary and just does a great job in locking down receivers and other pieces and playing some good lockdown defense in the secondary. If you go watch the highlights on Steve Nelson, he will lock down and clamp up on defense and he will prevent receivers from catching balls. 
I don't care if he's going to be a first string, second string. He will be a first string if we go ahead and sign Steve Nelson because he is a free agent and he is only asking for $5 million. And the Eagles currently have $4.5 million right now. But if you trade Zach Gertz, you get $8.5 million on top of that and then you get $13 million combined. And then you only have to spend $5 million on Steve Nelson to make it a one-year deal. And then you have $8 million left in cap space. That's not going to be enough to get Lane Dickerson signed. But it's just worth some money. But it's not worth too much. I know a lot of been, I know a lot of people have been saying that we should get Xavier Howard. Here's what I'm going to say about that. The trade proposal for Xavier Howard would be... Derek Barnett and the draft pick that the Colts gave us, which was a second round pick for next year that can become a first round pick if Carson Wentz plays 75% of the snaps or if the Colts go to the playoffs. And in my eyes, if you have a free agent cornerback, you can pay him easily, especially a cheap one like Steve Nelson. But Xavier Howard is asking for $14 million and we still have to sign Lane Dickerson. So I would not go after Xavier Howard because in my eyes, he's just a little too expensive for the Eagles to try to bring into Philly and try to play on the opposite side of Darius Slay. I like Xavier Howard. I think it's just that it's too expensive for the Philadelphia Eagles to try to get him and bring him onto the roster to play CB2. So I don't see the Eagles getting... Xavier Howard, although I would like to have him on the roster, because he played lockdown defense, and he was literally one of, if not the best cornerback last year, in during last season, when he was playing with Miami, but because he is still on the, on the Miami Dolphins, and is asking for $14 million, and would want a, would want Derek Barnett, and a 2022 second round pick that we got from the Colts that can be changed to a first if Carson Wentz either gets to the playoffs or plays 75% of the snaps with the Colts. If that can happen, I would love it, but I just don't see the potential that the Eagles go ahead and get Xavier Howard, but I really do like Steve Nelson because that man can lock down and he can just play way better in the secondary than some of these other guys that are still young and are still kind of learning the game and or much better on special teams. So, I like Xavier Howard, but I want Steve Nelson. Number four, which I do not think is going to happen, but I would love to happen, is to extend Dallas Goddard. Is Dallas Goddard, if Zach Ertz leaves, Dallas Goddard is going to be our starting tight end. And we want to pay Dallas Goddard as much money as we possibly can to increase his many years to come in Philadelphia. So, I want Dallas Goddard to be extended, but can we get the money to have Dallas Goddard stay in Philadelphia for longer than what he had originally on his normal contract? I don't know because of the cap situation. I mean, we have over $200 million for next season when we get to the offseason for 2022. Not for 2021 because we're in a very bad situation in cash space where we only have four and a half million dollars, and I just don't see us getting Goddard re-signed yet. But I really think that that for next offseason we may have a shot to get Dallas Goddard because I think he is a free agent after this season. So I really do think that the Philadelphia Eagles could re-sign Dallas Goddard because I don't need to rely on Richard Rodgers to be a starting tight end. It just is not going to happen. And I think Zach Ertz played his last game in Philadelphia on during the last game he played, which I believe was the Cardinals game, unless if he played in the Cowboys game or the football team game in Week 17. But it's just a tough cap situation. Look, if we want to exceed, we have got to make the right move. Right now, Howie Roseman is being a clown right now, and we literally have got to make moves in order for us to exceed and get back to the playoffs because everyone's currently sleeping on us right now and saying, oh, you guys are not going to make it to the playoffs anymore. Oh, you guys cannot make the right moves. 
Wah, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, listen up. This is a little off topic, but I'm just gonna say what I think about that. We only missed the playoffs for one season, and now everybody is sleeping on us because of that. I mean, before we missed the playoffs last season, we made the playoffs for three straight seasons, but that was not with Carson Wentz or Jalen Hurts. That was Nick Foles in the Super Bowl run, Nick Foles in the year after, and and Carson Wentz in the beginning, and then Josh McCown had to come in and take over when we were playing Seattle in the wild card. So, so I really hope that the Philadelphia Eagles can succeed. It's just that they have got to make the right moves, and they just need to do what they need to do and get get a get Zach Ertz out of Philadelphia, sign Lynn Dickerson, and get a CB two. The Dallas Goddard one's optional, but I don't think it will happen because of our of how much we have left in cap space. But those three moves right there, I really think can big time happen. And besides, we need younger depth on our old line. I mean, Brain Brooks is getting up there in age. Isaac Salem is getting up in there in age. Jason Kelsey's gonna get ready to retire. Lane Johnson's getting up there in age. All these guys are getting up to there in age, and we need some younger O-line depth. And we have Jordan Mulata, we have Andre Dillard to back him up, and also kind of play right tackle. We have Nate Herbig, who's pretty good. But Landon Dickerson is a really good Alabama offensive lineman that is not yet signed by Philadelphia, but in my eyes, he can be signed by Philadelphia eventually and be very successful when training camp starts. This is that we got to sign these guys. I mean... If we're going to succeed, we got to sign the right people and we got to play with toughness and intensity once the NFL season starts because we cannot have that big blow that we did last season where we went 4 11 and 1 because of Brandon Brooks with the torn Achilles, Andre Dillard out for the season, and, and we just cannot have this injury bug get to us for another year in Philadelphia, and we just have to come back with a vengeance and we really need to stay healthy and just make the right moves and get your CB2, get Zach Gertz out, sign Lynn Dickerson and we just have got to succeed overall. You guys give me your thoughts down below in the comment section. What do you think the Philadelphia Eagles need to do for the rest of the offseason before training camp starts and how did you feel about what I said on what the Eagles needed to do? You guys give me your thoughts down below in the comment section. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.